Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to need a jacket before I start. Oh. Then I'm going to be hot. Good morning, everybody. See if I can find us. Yes, ma'am, I can. How's everybody doing? Did you have a good Easter? We did. All right, let's get the link out to people. Fix my sleeves. Nothing up my sleeves except cold. Good morning, Palma and Sammy and Lita and Chris and Sammy and Valerie. Oh boy. And Steve and Johanna and Katie and Debbie and Carmen. Yes, I did YouTube. I hope I clicked on YouTube. Oy vey. If I didn't, I didn't. I can't go back now, Carmen. Bummer. I thought I clicked on it. Well, what can you do? Okay. It wouldn't be a Lindsay morning if there wasn't a glitch, right? So it's the day after YouTube, after YouTube, it's the day after Easter. No fooling because it's April Fool's Day. I already told my husband I was pregnant. It just doesn't work the same way that it used to, but that's my standard um, April Fool's joke. Oh, Palma says I'm on YouTube. Vicky is on YouTube. It's there, Carmen. Keep trying, I guess. Uh, Renata says in Germany, it's still a holiday today. I want to be there. Yay. Okay, so this is me for you guys that are newbies, because I know there's a lot of newbies today. Um, Creator of Cuteness is me and where you can find me. This is my website. It's creatorofcuteness.com. So if you're looking for lettering or doodling, there are fabulous books that I have on both topics. There's also a book on coloring, which is good. Um, then there's a series of 10 lettering classes if you're interested in the lettering. There are doodling classes and other lettering classes. The way you're gonna find those is you're gonna look under forever classes because they are classes that have already happened and I have saved them for you to watch over and over and over again. So all you have to do is purchase the class and then go do the work. That's the hard part, doing the work. So make sure you bookmark that page for creatorofcuteness.com. And then uh, I did not finish doctor and I did not do one for Easter. It was a very long involved weekend. Uh, but here's our little book that we did in March. So if you're new and you want to know what we do here, sometimes we do books. Sometimes we do cards and envelopes. Sometimes we just work randomly in our own journals. Um, this month we did a book for March and we did the prompts that were provided to us by our lovely um, prompt people. And I did not finish my book. <laughs> um, and I don't know if I ever will. What's going on there? Oh, this is getting caught. Um, but I mean, I may. I don't know. So that's where we ended was hanging with my peeps. So and then I have all these pages left, which I could work in if I wanted to, or I could just put the book on the shelf and call it a day, which I just might um, tie it up and say adios amigos but that's what we did for march um, and every month it's something different so join the fun because there's always something different i do want to file these in my book so if i do want to finish and a big thanks goes out to michelle durham for doing our prompts for march they were fabulous thank you michelle Every month we have somebody different doing the prompts for us. So it's, that's kind of cool. This month is April. 
And this month's prompts are done for us by Rebecca Swayze, which is very cool. She's super talented. You can go see her page at Becca's Paper Posies on Facebook, I believe. I believe that's correct. Um, and the way she did April was she did it for mail writing day. So we can do cards and letters and tags and things to use in happy mail. However, I changed that and I'm doing a mini book this week. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start our mini book and work in our mini book, hopefully today. So these prompts can be found in the files section of our page here. So go to files and it's the very, very first one for April. Um, I'm shamelessly plugging two current classes. One is called Journal Play Day. And um, I finished my book for Journal Play Day. So in the Journal Play Day class, we create a new journal every single month um, using the artwork that I provide for you guys. And then we work in our journal every month. So this month had a backwards book that opens backwards, which I really had fun doing. Um, created a little a scallopy thing use some stuff that people sent me. Uh, I have a little mini book in the middle of my journal that has information about me and my dada, except for one thing that needs to go in. But that was fun to do. And then another little book that pulls out here. We try not to put too many pages in our book, but we try to do something different each time because it's just, um, it's fun to create a new book every time. And the more you do books like this, the more you're going to understand how to put them together without me teaching you how. Um, although there's always a new tip or a trick or whatever that I learn from other people on Instagram and places. So it's the 13th quarter of Journal Play Day. Um, and it's $25 for three months, which makes it $8.33 for a month. You have to sign up for three at a time for April, May, and June. The class is at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but you can always watch it after the fact at whatever time zone you're in. We create a new signature journal like I just showed you every month, but they're always different. You get one to three pieces of artwork from me every month. That's guaranteed, but a lot of the times I'll do up to eight pieces of artwork, and then you get new journal blocks each month as well. So for the month of April, this is the artwork that you're going to get that we're going to work on this weekend because it's April 6th that we start our class. Um, and the reason that I didn't do it Easter weekend is because everybody's busy Easter weekend and I decided don't even bother. I, I was busier than anybody. And <laughs> anyway, um, so you get butterflies for your collage element portion. You get borders this month, which are scallops and butterflies and flowers and stuff. You're going to get journal blocks, which will help your brain uh, create cuteness and be able to journal a little bit as well, which will be fun. Then you get a bunch of backgrounds from me to make your book with. Like, won't that be a cute book? Or you could do it this way, and that would be a cute book. Or you could use this one and then decorate all those butterflies on top of it would be super cute. Or you could use this one. So that's all the artwork that you're going to get for the month of April. I am working on May currently. Um, it's got some really cute stuff coming, but it's not ready yet. So don't get excited. We're just working on April right now. Um, and then, so that's Journal Play Day. The next one I'm shamelessly plugging is the Creative Book Club, which is also on my website. So the way this works is I choose a book. You don't have to purchase it. I've already purchased it. And then we work in that book from that book. And then I tell you, this is a good book. You should go buy it. This is a good book, but it's out of print. Sorry, you're out of luck. Or don't even bother buying this book. We've only had one book that I said was really out of date. And that was the Carol Duvall book that was done in the 80s. And it was kind of not what it should be. So... The rest of the books so far that we're doing have been fabulous. So the way it works is I take the book and then we're going to learn something from the book. In this book, we're going to learn how to draw, <laughs> fingers crossed, real faces. We'll see how that goes. 
So you get four meetings for $30 or $7.50 a meeting. Um, this was January 19th, February 16th, and March 15th. Our last one of this session is April 19th. So if you join now, you're going to get all the back sessions as well. And then there will be a third session of Creative Book Club. Does that make sense? Because I already have the next book picked out, so we got to keep going. And I think a lot of you guys are really enjoying the book club, so I am. So that's all the shameless plugs for the morning. Now, let's talk about this teeny tiny book that we're making today. Here's how I start to create a book. I get some regular old cardstock and I start cutting. I don't really ever know what I'm doing. Are you guys ready for this, I hope? Get paper and pencil if you're not doing this with me so you can take some notes because I'm going to give you sizes. Um, and then I just start cutting paper and deciding if it's going to work or not. Um, so this one had just regular pages and then it has a fold over page as well. But the fold over page is going to go like that. And I usually don't put the whole book together. I just come up with the idea and then I do this. And then I hope that when I put the actual book together, it will work. <clears throat> so get ready to take a screenshot if you want. I'll give you these uh, dimensions again as we work through the book. It's in the featured section if you want to go there and get your information. But the cover is eight and a half by three and a half. The inside pages are two and a half by seven and a half. Two by five and a half and two by five and a half. There are just three pages in each um, in this entire book. But you know, when you fold them, it gives you like six pages and more. So we have to score these pages now. So the cover is going to be scored at all of these little numbers two and seven eighths, three inches, three and a half inches, five and seven eighths, six inches, and six and one eighth. Then the inside pages, the two and a half by seven and a half is going to get scored here at two and seven eighths by five and six eighths, or not by, but two and seven eighths and five and six eighths. And then the other inside page that's two by five and a half and two by five and a half is getting scored directly in half at two and three quarters. So those are all the dimensions for the book. And as we do it, I will talk to you about it. That being said, I wanted to make uh, another one. So I'm just gonna show you this one because it's coming along nicely. I always like to start my bases with a thin cardboard or this is actually um, file folder material. I'm sure in Germany they call them file folders as well, but this is a file folder. Do you see what it is? It's a folder that you put stuff into and it is a great weight for being a base for a little mini book. So I thought I was doing the exact same thing so I could make a second one today and then I cut it wrong. <laughs> so then I had to cut my inside pages wrong, but they're right because it doesn't really matter. So this is going to be the in this is going to be this book. And what I did here was I scribble scrabbled all over it in lettering. Uh, I can't tell you what it says because you can't really read it. I go one line going this direction, then I flip the whole thing over, and then I come back this direction, then I flip it over, and I go this direction. So it's really non-legible. It just becomes a background. I am going to take this big thing of twine and glue it or whatever to the cover. I don't know yet. But I screwed up under here, so I did stitch uh, a little ruffle on, and you can see the stitching here on the inside. But it's okay because this page is going to glue down and cover it up. So you're never going to see the stitching. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's talk about what I did on my own this weekend, which is why I didn't finish my other book. All I really wanted to do, the only reason I wanted to do this book is because I wanted to do a fabric hand-stitched cover really bad. So I took a piece of muslin and I tore it to the same size as our cover. Remember, our cover is eight and a half by three and a half. So this is just going to glue 
to my cover like this, but let's take a little bit of a walk through. I did a ruffle here. I did a blanket stitch with an, an extra piece here because it wasn't quite long enough. I painted watercolor on my muslin and then I stitched through all the watercolor. This little piece that looks like a paint palette is from a piece of fabric that I had and I stitched that down. I embroidered a little heart. I put a piece of lace down here. This rainbow is from the same paste plate fabric as this paint palette. Let me see if I have it. Don't ask me where this fabric is from or can you get it anymore because you cannot. As far as I know, I bought the last of the yardage of this, like 10 yards. I have it downstairs and it's my favorite fabric ever. Um, but this is where I cut all the little pieces out. There's that one. There's a paintbrush one that looks like paintbrushes. This one that has envelopes and postcards. And this one that has the rainbows. Okay. Um, then on top of the lace, I stitched another ruffle. Um, this is a, let's do it this way. This is a little envelope that was on the fabric. Then I wrote Lindsay's Book of Lindsay here uh, in Micron Pen. And then I did a little stitched beading with some beads. Can you see that? So that's my book. Oh, and then my husband said it needs a tie. So then I took a bunch of scrap and I hand stitched a little tie tie to it. I was going to do a button, but I really didn't want to do a button, you know. So I used the muslin and I watercolored it and I uh, did a little doodling on it. All right. So get ready. Here's our cover, which is manila folder file folder it is eight and a half long by three inches in width okay we have to score this especially if you're not if you are covering it with fabric scoring is not as important but if you're covering it with a piece of paper like this and no fabric you really want to score it first it's just easier so we're scoring at where's my paper we're scoring at two and seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, two and seven eighths. If you don't have a scoreboard, you're going to have to get a ruler. Uh, let me tell you a tool that is almost <laughs> used every day. At three inches and at a uh, and a half. That is incorrect. Hold on. Don't use that three and a half inch. Don't do it. And at three and one eighth. Three and one eighth. So you have two and seven eighths, three and three and one eighth. Okay. Then you're going to go all the way over to five and seven eighths. Six and six and one eighth. So basically you have like a little um, place where it's gonna bend. Does that make sense? So if you didn't get the dimensions, you can find them um, in the, where did I post them? It's in the featured section, but I'll make sure I post them again in our, and so all you do is you're just gonna kind of bend those into your book okay and i don't really need to bend mine yet because what i need to do first is i need to take my i'm hoping i can do this i haven't tried it yet i'm hoping it all works okay so we're gonna glue my cover to this um cover cover to cover and i want a lot of glue so i'm using the big bottle of fabrifix I'm going all the way around every um, edge and scored line and then in the center. Because it's fabric, you want to make sure you have glue down the center as well. Okay. 
Okay, let, let go of me. Now, here's the bigger problem. I did not figure, okay, this is going this way. That is the wrong way. This is the right way, I think. I can't remember. Let's look. Yes, that's the correct way. So now we have to make sure that we have it straight. That's the trickier part. And I'm kind of stretching my fabric as I'm pulling it taut. And just walking it back here. What is the measurement I changed? Christy wants to know. This one right here, the scoring, two and seven eighths, three inches, and three and an eighth. So this book is going to look like this. Then this is just going to wrap around it like this and get tucked in here. That's how the book is going to be finished. Do you see that? Pretty, pretty simple. It may be a little bit long. I may have to cut my tie. If you don't want a tie, you could put a slit here and add a button over here and have it but a button closure. That's up to you. I like ties. So then the next thing we're going to do is, this is for the big guy. Where's my pages here? I guess I cut two of these. Don't need another one. So this is for the interior page, which we have to score at two and seven eighths by five and six eighths. So this page is uh, two and a half by seven and a half. Hopefully I cut it right. It looks wrong. No, it's right. Two and a half by seven and a half. And this one is going to get scored. Oh yes, you could do a snap closure. Also, this page is getting two and seven eighths, a score line, and five and six eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six eighths. Okay, so that's one page, and it's going to fold like this. It's kind of a little flappy page. Okay, next ones are the ones that are two by five and a half, and we're going to score them directly in half, which is two and three quarters, hopefully, because I'm not good with numbers. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Two and three quarters. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. Two and three quarters, two and three quarters. However, the same principle can be made bigger. So you see that this one's bigger than this one. This is our, our original one, and this one's just a half an inch bigger. You could go a lot bigger if you wanted to. Okay. So what we want to do now, the tricky part for Lindsay, is we want to attach these pages in here which is going to be really freaking hard. I think I'm going to use a needle and a thread. But let's do this one first. So you can see the easy way if you're going to do it with paper. If you're going to do this with paper, the whole thing, after you've folded everything in half, you're just going to punch a hole here and punch a hole here and tie um, some tie ties through it. I have either hemp or I have some rainbow cording, either way. But you could use whatever you have. So where's my puncher? Oh, I'm just gonna put a hole, and I probably should have attached these with a paper clip or something, but I'm not gonna. That would be the smart thing to do. Use a bulldog clip or something so these don't move around. 
This is why you needed the small hole punch in your supply list. And I think I'm going to use this stuff. I'm going to double it over. Maybe triple it over. Anybody totally lost? Too bad. Just kidding. If you're lost, let me know. Okay, so now this has to go through all of these holes. Maybe. Maybe not. Tripling it may not work. It should work. It's just very thick. Come on, catch. All right, there we go. I got all three of them through the first hole. Now the next hole. Put the book di the direction it goes. Um, your flaps, by the way, the tinier flap is on the right-hand side. The bigger flap is on the left-hand side. Now it's got to go through this one. I'm using spit. My grandma taught me that to keep all your threads together. Maybe. Maybe not. More spit. Sorry that my head's in the camera. And then it goes through this one. Okay. Don't lose this one. Got to cut this. Might be easier for you guys to just use one thing of thread, but because I'm crazy. Okay, now we have to go through all of these again. And if it's easier for you to use a needle, go ahead. It's not for me. Okay, I'm through the first layer. Second layer. Come on. You know you want to go through there. There you are. And the next one. Not easy to do when your hands are shaky. But we will make it work. Okay, all this for one tiny little book. But again, you could do this any size you wanted to. That's the good news. Come on. All right, so now I've got all of my pages through. And you want to make your uh, twine long enough so that when you're done, you have a nice group to tie with. And I think what I might do is... Tie this to the, I don't know. I'm going to leave those long. So that's how you would put your book together if you're not doing it the way I did um, with my fabric. Do you see that? So this is still ucky, and I can glue this part down here, which is probably what I will do. Or I could take another piece of fabric and glue it there, and then I'll have all these pages to work in. And then when it closes, I'm going to put this one over here, this one over here, and this one on the inside. So I still need some kind of a closure here. Does that make sense? Let's do one more. So 
I think. Why is this not fitting? Yeah, I don't know. This isn't fitting. Hold on. It will fit. It's just bigger than. Oh. Hold tight. I'm backwards. There we go. So for this one, I'm thinking I'm going to take a needle and a thread and I'm going to thread it through with the needle and thread and stitch it on because it is so thick over here where this ruffle is that I'm never going to be able to punch a hole. So. Oh, no second. I'm going to use, I already have thread in this one, so let's use it. It's not long enough, though, so let's not use it. Let's use a turquoise kind of color. Doesn't matter because my book cover is all colors. Now I have to thread my needle. That's the tough part. How many pieces of paper did you use? Three for the book, for the pages, and I'll show you why. Let me thread my thing first, Christy, and then I'll show you why. I mean, you could add 10 pieces of paper, but we're just doing this for this week. You know what I mean? So here's our prototype. Don't mind all of the uh, chicken scratches. But over here, it's going to have my name or your name. Then today's prompt is hearts. Hearts. And then we're flipping the page. And then we have happy camper. And then we have sunshine girls. And then we have rainbows. Then we have Lindsay flowers. And then we have the only one I don't really like and I may not do, which is birthday candles. <laughs> and then the whole thing closes like, once it's attached in here, the whole thing closes like this. So then back here, you have a page to do cuteness. Does that make sense? Got it? Question, would it be easier to sew the pages in before you put the cover on? Maybe. But apparently my brain doesn't work that way. Whatever works for you guys is what you want to do. You know, I'm giving you the, the bones. You do what you do you and I'll do me. Oh yeah. It's going to work good as long as I don't slice my finger with the needle. So this looks like I'm going to have the knot in the center. It doesn't look like the knot's going on the outside. Let's hide that underneath the ruffle. I mean, I don't plan things out real well, you know what I mean? So it just kind of is organically happening. And we're just going to tie the knot. So the other one was on the outside. This one will be on the inside. Uh, I didn't tie a knot. Now I tied a knot. So you'll have to decide if you want your fluffy parts on the inside or on the outside. That's up to you. I'm going to tie an extra knot just because I can. And if you're worried about your knots coming apart, you can always add a little bit of glue on the knot. And that'll hold it in place. And I like to fluff these out because this is six strands of embroidery floss and it fluffs real nicely. 
If my nails were longer, it would fluff really good. Okay, so then I need to decide, do I want to glue this down to here? Let's see what I came up with in my thingy-majiggy. I did not glue it down. So we're going to leave this here, and we can do a piece of paper. In fact, let's do that now. We're going to cut a piece of scrap to glue in there. So that'll be our front page. And I'll tell you, oh, everything just fell. I'll tell you in a second the size of this. So it's going to be two and three quarters by two and a half. And it's going to glue in here, but not quite yet, because I want to draw on it. I don't want to draw with this here, you know what I mean? Because it's real bumpy, lumpy. But that'll go in there. So our first page is hearts. Do you remember? Let's make sure I did this right. Second page is happy camper. Turn the page. Sunshine girls. Turn the page. The center is rainbows. That's a drag because now I have that in the center, but that's okay. Then the next page is Lindsay flowers. The next page is birthday candles, etc., which I may not do. And then this back page here is just cuteness. So we can doodle or whatever we want on that. And my book is going to go back together. Whoops, not this one. This is going over here. This little flap is going to close the whole thing, close the interior of the book. This is going to go here. This is going to go here. And then it gets wrapped. And this is way too long. I'm going to cut this. I think this, cut it down and use that for something else. Okay, you guys good? Everybody good? Let's do our first page. This is the page that was two and a half by two and three quarters. If and you want to do what I do. Let's bring the camera down because today's prompt is hearts, but we'll do that in a minute. This is for one week, Carmen. Hold on, let's find the, let's find the prompt. So our prompts this week are Lindsay week, but I don't want you to do Lindsay week. I want you to put your name, right? Then our prompt for today is hearts. Then next is Happy Camper, Sunshine Girls, Rainbows, Lindsay Flowers, and then Birthday. But I think I'm going to change Birthday. Because I don't like birthday stuff. I don't know. Okay, so this is just a page where you can do whatever you want. I think I'm going to draw a picture of me. Man, oh man, oh shevitz, am I shaky today. Boy, shakiness. So I'm drawing a sunshine girl. You could use a collage element if you wanted a little bunny. Like a bunny would be cute for Lindsay Week. Oh, I'm for sure doing this bunny. Let's flip this over and erase this line. We'll use a collage element because then we don't have to draw anything. And she's so cute. Okay. Let's get our glue again. Anybody completely lost? Oh, no, I'm not doing a book a week, Carmen. So I'm going to be gone for a week in April. Um, what week am I gone for? I'm gone pretty much winter week. So snowflake, snowman, Christmas, mittens, and holly. Um, and I'm trying to decide, should we ask Carmen to do this again, which is what I've already done. But she hasn't decided if she wants to do it or not. Because if Carmen does do it while I'm gone, she probably won't use the prompts that are there. That's going to be my guess. You know? 
Those aren't Carmen prompts. So we'll just have to see. Otherwise, um, I could ask Carol Lee and she would probably stick with the winter theme, but I bet you Carmen would not because that's just not a Carmen thing. Carmen says, no, those are not my kind of prompts. So I'm just putting my name here. I don't want to write Lindsay Week. I just want my name because it's my book. So you guys should write your name for your book. I know everybody had fun with Carmen. She could do a, I don't know what she could do that week. But it won't be me, I can tell you that much. Susan says, Carmen, Carmen, Carmen. Lynn says, Carmen, please, yes. Teresa says, raising my hand. Remember, don't put your don't put my name here. Put your name. Unless you want to say Lindsay Week with Susie or whatever your name is. And I'm putting creator of cuteness and you can put, you are a cuteness creator. Cause that's what you guys are, cuteness creators. And I am your cult leader, the creator of cuteness. <laughs> oh, funny. I never wanted to be a cult leader. Carmen, are you checking everybody's answers? Because I can't look and do this at the same time. So let me know if they all want you. It sounds like they all want you. So maybe what I'll have to do is either get some artwork for Carmen to use or just let her run, run on her own. But it's up to Carmen. It's not up to me. All right. Let's do just a little stitching on her, shall we? Before we put her down, we'll do a bright pink. Carmen's blushing. <laughs> That's funny. They love you, Carm. All right, Carmen, it is. I'll just, we'll just have to figure out something that she can do that week. She also does not make cards, so another tricky one. Okay. So here's how you um, stitch on paper. You poke your holes first with your needle. It's better if you have something spongy soft on the back. We used to use mouse pads, but maybe a piece of cardboard would be good. So now we're gonna come up through the back. And I don't have any tape, but normally, do I have tape over there? Oh, I do. What I normally do is I tape this down. Scotch tape, regular old tape. Carmen, you could do a book for that week. Do you want to do a mini book that week? Go ahead. I don't think anybody would care what you do. This is called a back stitch. I think, I don't know for sure. Oh. 
I can't talk much when I'm sewing, apparently. Palma says, make a book that week. That'd be fun. Or you could do tags. Carmen doesn't like tags either. She likes journaling. Okay, so now we have a little bit of stitching on our little bunny girl on one side. Don't ask me to teach you how to embroider. That's not going to happen. Carmen says, I like tags. Okay, do tags. Do winter tags the Carmen way. And if you want, I could make you art or you could do your own art. And you could give people art to use on a tag and they could be Carmen style tags. Kind of like a Tim Holtz tag almost, but Carmen tags. You know what I mean? I just wanted to do a book. I've been seeing lots of mini books on Instagram and I have been wanting desperately to do a book. Okay, I'm gonna come up here and do a French knot. So I'm gonna poke a hole. Don't ask me how to do a French knot. I could tell you, but I don't know that I'm a good teacher in that. So I'm going to wrap it around twice around my needle and stick it back down right next to the hole that we made originally. Hold the thread and pull it tight. Look how cute she is. She just has a little tiny bit of embellishment. Don't even have to do a knot. We're just going to cut this and tape it. What did I do with the tape? Oh, I left it over there. Okie dokie. Artichokey. So there's a little bit of embroidery on our front piece. It's going to go right in there. And I could add detail if I wanted to. Maybe some... Um, oh, I have a hair that I stitched in apparently. I could add um, watercolor, colored pencil, whatever. It's just not going to be real easy now because I have all this thickness here on the front, but I can make it work. Is everybody doing this? Where is this bunny from? It's a collage element. I don't know which one. There are so many bunnies, you guys. <laughs> so many bunnies. Oh, and guess what today is? I looked up um, if there were any other holidays or things in April. There is only, um, what's it called? Not, not Arbor Day. Earth Day, April 22nd. But today in the Book of Days is a sourdough bread making day. How funny is that? I'm not making any bread today. So if you wanted to, and you didn't want to draw on any of these, you could draw on another card and then glue it in here. Do you know what I mean? If you wanted to do a collage, Carmen, do collage. That'd be fun. A winter collage, and you could work on it each day. That'd be fun. Um, if you wanted to, you could put a black piece of paper in here. You know what I mean? Let me put this back so we don't lose our sample piece. So next, oh wait, I do need the sample because it has my outline. So today is hearts. So we did Lindsay and our name or your name. So today is hearts and hearts. So there's going to be a heart here and a heart here. I'm going to use a heart that I already have done, I think. I think I have some pre-cut hearts here. If not, we'll draw one. Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty. And this is not pretty. The last of my green hearts. So I think we'll use this one here. What do you say? Because it's already made. And then we'll draw something here because we have a little bit of time.
So let's maybe think about this for a second. Pinks and oranges. So let's do a little watercolor right here. Denise says, I participated in the very first Earth Day. What'd you do? Plant a tree? I'm going to go yellow. And then orange. And then pink. See how much fun these little pages are to play with? I mean, basically, you're done. It's just so quick and simple. It's fun, right? I love these little bitty pages. And you could glue, you could also stitch more on these pages. You could glue a fabric ruffle. Maybe we'll cut a ruffle out for this page. That would be cute. I used plain cardstock, by the way, for this. Plain old card stuff. I didn't want to do anything fancy. I need glue right there. My rabbit is pulling up. Okay. Um, what did I just say? Oh, I need to glue my rabbit down. Oh, you walked 20 miles to earn money for the earth? Thank you, Denise. The earth thanks you. My bunny sourdough came out great. I didn't take home any bread. Everybody wanted it. So. It was so awesome to eat and to have it come out not misformed because a lot of people that made the bunny breads in the sourdough group, um, their bunny breads were misshapen. Okay, where's my, why do I always lose the pins? Well, it's gone. Okay, so I think we will put a little ruffle here what do I have? This is cute. Let's check it out. Do we like the gray ruffle? Not so much. Do we like black and white ruffle? Not so much. It has to be this rainbow. So I will show you how to do a hand-stitched ruffle. Yeah, the rainbow is going to be good. Oh, I found the pin. We're going to glue it on. I'm not going to stitch it onto the... First thing you want to do is put a knot in your uh, embroidery floss or thread or whatever it is you got going. And all you do is what we in this business like to call a running stitch. So you come up from the back and you go down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and then you pull it and you let it go squished, ruffled down and up. That's why I like to do these on the sewing machine because it's much faster. My mother-in-law's birthday is on Earth Day. So we celebrate Earth Day birthday, Earth Day birthday. She's not a big Earth person. She doesn't really care about the earth. I just got this all twisted. Whoops. What did I do? I think it got caught under here. 
So I just got to pull this all through. Ay vey. What a mess. Come on. Gee whiz, that was hard. And we just keep going until we have ruffled the whole thing. Lisa says, I'm getting my sewing machine out again. I think um, I want to do this at the retreats, but I have to ask if everybody can sew with a, with a needle and thread. And then, gosh darn it, it happened again. Stop it, you thread. Fixing it another way. Aye. I bought new needles that had large eyes for threading <clears throat> because my eyes are not large anymore. They're squinty and old, and it's hard for me to see the eye of the needle. I'm not going to squish this up yet until we get to the end. Did I get a knot in my thread now? Crazy, ridiculous. All right, we're to the end. So now you've got all these stitches in here running through and we wanna squish it up and make a ruffle that fits in there. So we're gonna go about like that. We'll put a knot at the very end to keep it from unruffling, although it will be glued in place. And if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Gonna take our glue, our glue. Did you shrink the bunny down to fit in the book? No, I cut her, I cut her torso off. See? <laughs> she just happened to be that size. All right, we're gonna put a little bead of glue on the edge of this little flap. And make sure you have a good amount of glue when you're putting a ruffle down. And then we're just gonna make sure it's kind of ruffled all the way through. You can as, as, um, kind of move around your ruffle. And I want it more off the page than on the page. And just make sure it is all the way glued down. And make sure it's not glued together, because I think I just glued the whole thing together. I did. I glued it to this page. But that's the beauty of Fabrifix, because you can move stuff. I'm cutting that. Cute, right? Now, here's the trouble. I'm not sure I like this heart. I kind of do. Let's go with it. glue on this page. Uh, might have to glue a piece to that. So let's, um, I could stitch around this heart. What time is it? Oh no, I'm not stitching. So let's get a white or sparkle pop. Pink.
And we're gonna glue this heart right down. I think I'll put white dots in the center. And then we'll do a fancy heart on that other page. I love these little books too, because they're not planned. You just kind of go with it. And just, again, just like any other project, grab a bunch of stuff that kind of coordinates together. Go look for buttons, charms, little flowers would be cute. Um, you could use stencils, you could use paint, you could use whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's do the orange. And do some color in here around our heart. And maybe the gold. I don't think we'll go all the way up to the top. I'm gonna get a pencil. A pink pencil. And then maybe orange. Okay. Okay. I like it. This one needs to be sharpened. There's our little heart on the front cover. I don't want to write on this because there's too much bulk there. So let's measure. with a ruler, two and a half by two and a quarter. I just happen to have some extra little scraps of paper. This one's a little darker color. I don't know what kind of paper it is, but it's a little different. Two and a half. Wait, was that two and a half? Yes, by two and a quarter. So this is going to go this way, right here. So we'll do our heart on this. Put our book aside for a second. I kind of think I want to stitch this heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the heart that I want to stitch, and I'm going to do that after the fact. That's the heart I'm going to stitch on there. So I've got to poke all the holes and stitch it. But we'll do some doodly things on the outside of the heart. So it'll be stitched on the inside. And just some of these crazy doodles on the outside. And if you don't want to stitch it, just draw on the inside of your heart or whatever you want to do. When I start doodling, I cannot talk because I just want to doodle. Polly Welly doodle all the day. That's me. 
Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well, my faithful friends. For I come to Alabama with a blah, 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 singing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. I don't remember the words. Kind of remember the words, but obviously not exactly. So that's our little book for today. I can't remember what tomorrow is. I think it's Happy Camper. So we'll be drawing or stitching or doodling or something. I'm sorry I didn't tell you guys to bring anything to stitch because I just didn't think I was going to stitch my pages, but then it just kind of happened that I wanted to stitch. But I'm going to do a rainbow heart because my book is rainbowy colors. You do what works for you. Right. Lindsay, is there anything you cannot do? Heck, yes. I cannot grow plants. I cannot garden. I cannot. They all die. Um... I cannot add a stack of numbers. Um, I cannot weld. That is something I've always wanted to do, welding. I cannot do mosaics. Do you know why? That's a, This is a good story because I can't get my hands dirty. By the way, Easter egg dye is stupid. I had to scrub my hands raw to get the Easter egg dye off. I cannot have paint on my hands, so that's something else I cannot do. Um, I cannot play guitar anymore. That's sad. But I don't really care. I cannot change a tire. Oops, I got black in the center there, so I smeared it right here. So that means I'm going to have to do something to cover that up. Who knows what yet. Might watercolor the heart and maybe stitch around it in one color. I don't know. I cannot do calligraphy, at least in my book, I cannot, unless in my brain, I cannot. I can do Lindsay's style of calligraphy, but not like what I consider to be calligraphy. So this little book, if we didn't want to do it um, one day at a time, is something that I think you could do in one day. You could finish this little book in a day, which would be super fun. But the cover took me three days. So honestly, you couldn't do that cover all. Well, I guess you could. I just, you wouldn't be having time to pee or eat or anything else if you're going to do the cover at the same time as everything else. I cannot lay in the grass because I would die. Where was I the other day? Oh, sitting with Atticus yesterday for Easter in the grass. I thought they were going to have to take me to the hospital. That's something I cannot do. I wish I could. I like to look at the outsides. Like I like to be in the forest, but I don't like to be in the forest. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't breathe in five minutes flat being out in the nature woods. Okay, so I definitely have to color the center. I'm going to take my black 
No, let's use the silver. No, not gold. No, let's use black since I can't find silver. I'm going to fill in some of these holes here with black sparkle pop. Some of these gaps. And then later, when I'm done working, I will go back and stitch my heart. But if you think you cannot sew, get a needle and thread and just try that running stitch that I did. You can do it. Anybody can. If you can thread a needle, that's the tricky part at our age or my age, I guess I should say. Threading the needle is not fun. But they do have needle threaders. I don't ever want to use a needle threader because it's going to be a crutch in my world. Okay, I love that. I just don't like that I got it all smeared in here, but I'll fix that somehow. I don't know how yet. Oh yeah, Carmen says you could always put the cover on last, but what fun is that? Oh, look how cute that's going to be. So that's our, fir our first pages of our book. And this gets wrapped. I think I want to cut it right here. So that this would get tucked in here. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just too thick. But it's really fun. Okay, so tomorrow, let's look at our prototype here. So we did this heart and this heart. And then tomorrow, we're going to do Happy Camper, because that's our next prompt. Happy Camper. Okay? So that's it for today in our mini book of cuteness. I really, really like it so far. So far, so good. Okay, it is 9-12, and I am running late. Um, have a great day, you guys. I'm also going to put this book together, um, and I'll show you when it's finished so you can see how a second choice of doing this book is with just paper. It doesn't have to be fancy like I'm doing, but I like fancy a lot. Okay, guys, um, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you had fun doing our little mini tiny book. I did. I know that for sure. All right. See you later. Bye.